Hey guys, we are back for another review, and today we're taking a look at something sort of familiar but sort of different. I've seen, I've shown some of these figures on the channel before, but it has been quite a while, and it's been a long time since I've actually gotten any new in. So we're going to take a look at some uh, new Mythic Legions Coliseum line figures from Four Horsemen Toy Design, and we're going to start today off with... Uh, Raygor here. So this guy is one of the small subline of figures in the Colosseum line. Uh, it's basically just new Mythic Legions figures. It's just kind of the the theme that they're taking this small subline in. Uh, so we've seen some of this stuff before, but these are very new, very exciting for me. So he's gonna be the first one I take a look at. As far as packaging goes, these are all really standard. Uh, they come on this collector-friendly card, so you can take them out and put them back in. We've got the figure here on the front in the window with the Legion's logo down on the bottom. The side has a small bio for this particular character. And the back, they all have the same card art on the back and just shows some kind of wartime uh, Mythic Legion style artwork on the back. So let's just do it and pull this guy out and take a closer look. All right guys, so here is Regor out of the package. And uh, this is a figure that I was really looking forward to getting. Uh, just something about it looks awesome. Very cool design, very menacing looking figure. And I gotta say that I am pleasantly surprised in just how cool this figure is. Uh, I've done some Mythic Legions figure reviews on the channel before uh, from the Birds subline that came out a while back, and those are all I've ever really gotten a hold of. I do have the full 2.0 Kickstarter coming uh, later this year, I hope, when they finally come out, uh, but I've never gotten too deep into these because generally some of the designs just haven't been for me, but some of these recent ones have really, really done it, and this one in particular. So this is how he comes out of the package. He does have a lot of stuff, part of the Mythic Legion uh, shtick is that you can make them look like entirely different figures depending on how you configure some of the accessories they come with. So I figured for articulation's sake we'd keep him kind of bare bones. I'll go through articulation and then when we talk about sculpt and paint we'll talk about uh, some of the other accessories before we get into things like weapons. So uh, as far as articulation goes it is pretty standard but at the same time there's a little bit uh, different from what I kind of expect. I'm kind of going into this thinking more along the lines of Masters of the Universe Classics but they definitely have a little bit more than that. So on Regor in particular, these horns are articulated. You can swivel them just based on how they're designed. Uh, they rotate in there so you can move them around. The head is on a ball, so up and down and side to side and swivel and all over the place. Tons of movement there. The arms can go out. They can rotate. No bicep swivel though. That's kind of one of the things with this line that some people don't seem to like. Uh, I'm not too upset about it. There is an elbow swivel to kind of make up for it. It's not the same motion. It's not the same point of articulation, but it does help. Single jointed elbow. Uh, we've got wrist rotation in addition to the elbow rotation. Uh, sorry, forearm rotation, then wrist rotation, then wrist hinge. He does have what appears to be a double ball peg on the uh, waist, so you can go back pretty far, forward a good bit, and then swivel at the waist. We do, of course, have a nice thigh split based on kind of the Motu Classic style of uh, joints here. Kick forward, kick back. We got a thigh cut for swivel. I personally think the joint is a, is a tad bit unsightly, but most of the time it's covered and it doesn't really bother me. It's just something if you get in there, it's probably gonna look a little wonky. We do have rotation at the knee, single jointed uh, knee as well. And then as far as the ankle goes, you have ankle rotation, you have rocker, and you have hinge. So there is a lot of movement down in those ankles, uh, more so than you know I was kind of expecting based on, of course, what I said, Masters Classics. So all things considered, he's actually pretty mobile. He, uh, he does have quite a bit of articulation. There is a lot going on with this figure. Uh, you can definitely get him into some poses. You might not normally get figures of this size in because he is a little bit larger than your average figure and we'll do size comparisons as well. But I'm pretty happy with the articulation on this guy. I don't have anything I'm really missing. Sure, double jointed knees and elbows are always nice and always welcome but I don't think you can really do uh, much on the rotation front down there if those were double jointed, not to mention the fact that they are a bit on the ugly side depending on how they're implemented. So I'm not too upset about it. Uh, it works pretty well and you'll see that you can get into some sweet poses uh, regardless. Now, like I said, this is how Regor comes out of the package. So we'll talk about him in this sort of configuration uh, to start with. So this is a Colosseum based subline of Mythic Legion. So you got to think you've got like brutal warriors decked out in armor, or in this case, he's only sort of decked out so far. Uh, but we've got a pretty specific, unique type of design going on here. And honestly, I love 
everything about the aesthetics of this figure and the other figures that I have gotten so far. This helmet in particular, I think is absolutely wild. Uh, very, very cool design. I love the big horns coming off and you can pop these out because he does come with uh, extra extra replacements for these, which I'll talk about with accessories, but you could, if you wanted, you you know, if maybe you don't like this curved design, you can turn them around and have the point facing forward, or you can, you know, rotate them and have them facing outward or have them going down. So, you know, you've got a lot of options there. If you take them out, you're just gonna have a hole on his head, but at the same time, you do have the option to do that kind of stuff. He's obviously uh, got kind of a barbarian slash knight theme going on. You've got like the tunic going down with the flowing robes, which does have a lot of shading all over as far as paintwork goes. He's got this humongous belt with the skull with a lot of intricate design there as well. And then of course, you've got the helmet which matches the armor, but in, in a certain way. So you've got the black striped, blue striped helmet with a kind of blue armor that fades to black for uh, for the arms. And then as for as well for the uh, for the legs down there, it's kind of a gunmetally dark blue black. He he has a uh, he's got a little sheath for his uh, for his knife that'll come with. We'll show that in the accessories part. And then he does have this little I don't know what you call this thing. Uh, you can remove it though. It actually pegs into the back of the neck, and you could take that off if you wanted. I think it looks pretty cool. I like it's kind of like a chest guard, mouth guard type deal. Uh, but in general, I think the aesthetics on this guy are just pretty amazing. I do have one kind of oddity about this particular figure, and I haven't really checked my others yet, but it looks like, in terms of the paint, uh, this guy does have quite a bit. You know, I've mentioned we've got the shading on the tunic, we've got the different colored helmet and armor, and I think, just based on my uh, kind of looking over this figure, the actual skin tones actually have quite a bit of paint on them. Uh, if somebody knows different, let me know, but there is some distinct shading going on in the musculature, and the musculature is actually sculpted pretty, pretty damn well, honestly. Uh, it's, it's very, very nice. I do have a little paint splotch here, uh, but for the most part, it's really, really clean, but there is a lot of shading going on in the musculature on the arms and on the legs. And that brings me to what I find kind of be the, uh, the oddity of this is that uh, the joints are actually have actually been painted. So as you, as you move your figure, you know, and someone let me know if maybe something weird for me, but I doubt it. Uh, I've been finding a lot of paint flaking off in that joint. Now, is it a problem? It's not a problem because the skin tone on the joints matches the skin tone on the arms. So it's not really an issue with a paint mismatch or anything like that. It's just more that, you know, I was kind of worried for a second. I saw some paint uh, f flaking off, I got worried but ultimately it was just coming out of those joints. As you move it, it's gonna scrape because it's a friction joint, so it's gonna scrape and uh, kind of peel away. But otherwise, you know, it's just kind of an oddity. Something to point out which makes me uh, think that yes, there is paint all over this figure, not just on the armor, not just on the, the tunic and the belt and these little straps that hang down, but on the actual flesh tones themselves. I mean, there is a lot of detail work that has gone into making this figure look just so amazing. It's it's an excellent design that is accentuated by an excellent paint scheme. Okay, now as far as accessories goes, there is quite a bit. Uh, like I mentioned before, my main experience with Mythic Legions have been with the birds figures, and those generally just came with a weapon and some extra feet, which the extra feet never really did anything for me because they were meant to be used with specific stands. These guys, however, come with a lot of stuff. Uh, there is a huge thing with Myth Mythic Legions to be uh, kind of parts interchangeable. So they use, they do a lot of parts reuse on the sculpt. Uh, you know, I'm saying I see a lot of parts on this figure that I see on some of my other figures. But they also have a lot in the way of making this one figure kind of have multiple configurations based on just how you want to deck him out. So we've got extra extra replacements for the horns. We have got some shoulder pads. We've got an extra uh, strap to hold a, a sword, although he doesn't really have a much need for that. It's just another, another pack in to have. And then of course he does have some weapons and he's got a shield. Now, as far as what I think are probably the coolest aspects of it, like I said, is the parts interchangeability. So we're gonna pop these guys off. And like I said, you could uh, turn them upside down and have the horns pointing out, which honestly I think looks pretty awesome on its own. Uh, but you will have these guys here. So he's got some shield, um, like pauldrons for his, his shoulders. And on the back side, you've got some pegs. I still don't know what this tall one is, the long one right here. I'm not really sure what that's for. Uh, like I said, the main, a big thing, not the main thing, but a big thing for legions is parts interchangeability, parts reuse. So this is used for something. I just don't have a figure that takes use of it yet. Uh, is it a big deal for me? No, it's not. Uh, but these guys will peg into the back of those of those holes there 
And I mean, it's gonna change the entire look of this figure as far as I'm concerned. So we'll peg those in, pop them in. And now you've got him wearing these beefy pauldrons. And you know, he's a pretty big figure to begin with, but he looks even bulkier like this. And then what you can do is you take the extra little doodads for his head. And these are kind of like, uh, they kind of look, look like dragon's fins to me or something like that. Uh, something scale related, something like that to me. Pop those in, they kind of look like, uh, you know, something from a winged reptilian beast or something like that, something cool. I think, I mean, this looks like a different figure to me. Obviously it's the same overall sculpt and design, but that's a different figure if you really wanted it to be, or just have one pauldron, uh, something like that, you know, give them a, a one pauldron type look, because that's, that's an aesthetic all its own. But you've got a distinct look here because you've got these extra pieces. And on top of that, they're sculpted and painted really well. So of course these blue fins match the blue on the helmet. This red and this black match the aesthetic of the rest of his look. While not being out of place, they just add on to the overall look and feel of the figure. And then as far as actual quote-unquote accessories goes, I'll show you what he does have. So we've got a little knife here, and it's just kind of a standard knife. Nothing too crazy. Blue, gold, silver, but you can pop it into his little uh, sheath on his belt there. And it just sticks just fine. It's, it's only meant to hold that really specific item, but it fits perfectly and it's not going anywhere. And then he's also got this big sword. So uh, I've seen this a few times. Some of my birds have this. And uh, honestly, all the figures that I got recently have this exact same sword, just painted differently. So it's just a silver sword with some gold paint on the hilt. And he can hold this just fine in uh, either hand. Even if you drop him on the, on the table, he'll still hold it just fine. So right there. And then kind of the biggest thing he's got, biggest as far as accessories goes, he has this big shield, which will clasp onto his wrist. It's got kind of like a, uh, a dragon type motif painted on the front, some tampography right there, which looks really nice. So it's a silver shield painted red with that black on the front. Uh, I mean, but, but if you had this figure standing alongside the figure I showed you when this video started, ideally they're really different. They look very, very similar, but they look like they could almost be two different like knights or gladiators decked out in similar but different armor. And I just absolutely dig that. And I figured we might as well do maybe a bit of a size comparison here. So we've got Regor alongside a current Marvel Legend. So we've got Deathlock over here. He's not too big and he's not too small for a Legends. He's pretty average overall. So you see that Regor is roughly the same size, but a little bit taller and he's definitely a bulkier in terms of a figure. And then we've got him alongside the original Motu Classics Triclops. You can see that they definitely fall in line with Motu Classics and with Regor being kind of a normal human character, he fits definitely in scale with some of your normal Masters figures. And then for a bit of a Mythic Legions comparison with what I can show you, we've got him alongside some of the birds from the older wave. So we've got Voltus and we've got Cyanicus here. So you can see that even though Cyanicus in particular is a little bit taller, but that's just because of his head, they're still definitely in scale. Uh, Regor being a human character, he is just bulkier, but they're still overall uh, similar in size and scope. So they will all mesh very well together. So obviously I am a huge fan of this figure. Uh, I have gotten three figures in this latest Colosseum uh, type subline that they have released and I'm 100% on board with these figures. Uh, again, this was kind of a new entry into Mythic Legions for me personally because what I have are some of the older figures. So these are definitely kind of a step up and it really, really, really makes me excited for the Kickstarter figures that I've got coming towards the end of the year because honestly, that's like 40 some figures and I cannot wait to tear into them. If they are even uh, almost as good as this figure. I am going to be kind of over the moon with these. I am really, really happy with this guy. The only real issue I have, and again, like I said, it's not really an issue, is the paint flaking in those joints. I get it. Uh, if, if anything, it just tells me that they actually did paint a lot of detail onto those flesh tones, and I can't be upset about that. I think everything here looks great. Sculpted exceptionally. The Four Horsemen really are uh, kind of a step above in toy development. I really, I'm, I'm kind of gushing over them, but I'm a huge longtime fan and I am so happy to have this figure in my collection. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mythic Legions Coliseum Ragor figure from Four Horsemen Toy Design. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching and until next time.